Hello, hello, it's Robert here. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine, yeah. A little bit breaking up. The phone's breaking up a little bit. Uh, Is it? Okay. Ah, you're uh, a bit better now. Let me, okay, let me, let me open the windows. I find that sometimes okay. around here. It's, sometimes, yeah, that helps when I open the windows. Yeah, can you hear me better now? Yes, thank you. Thank you very okay, much. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the call this morning. I'm sorry that we couldn't really uh, uh, con conclude this morning. Yeah, well, mm. at least I've, I've got a bit more time now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, yeah. Um, I've been looking at birthdays. I, I started off reading um, lesson forty-four of Enjoy Life Forever. Okay. I found out that birthdays were banned in the Watchtower of the first of October, nineteen fifty-one, page six hundred and seven. So I wasn't okay. aware of that. It's it, for half of your history, your leaders practiced keeping birthdays. It was only stopped in 1951, which puzzles me because you claim Jesus did an inspection, the cleansing work, and he he cleansed the Watchtower Society of its errors and chose them in 1919. Well, why didn't Jesus pick up on this if there really is something wrong about keeping a birthday? But okay. I don't see any way that a little child of seven or eight who has a birthday party is, is committing some sort of paganism in doing that. I have a lot of problems with that. Thank you. Okay, okay then. And, and uh, I, I mean, I agree with you. And lots of people will see it that way as well, especially as it's something that involves uh, the children nowadays. We don't, want it, we don't want a situation where or it's sort of a bit sensitive when you talk about uh, it sounds like you're depriving children of um of something that they enjoy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah um but i, I mean I've, I've i've opened to that same chapter uh and it's sort of uh, chapter 44 of the uh of the book it it really is looking at celebrations celebrations that displease god um and uh, from the uh Bible references. I mean, we we uh, paraphrased a couple of them in the morning. Those are the two references that we the two references that we have to uh, birthday celebrations in the Bible. That's yeah uh, the one in Genesis and the one uh, of uh, Herod in the book in the book of Matthew. Um, it's the the fact that they are recorded for us in the Bible. There's a reason behind them, uh, and. Uh, Look, looking at them might enable us to sort of see a principle which will guide us on whether it's a pleasing celebration or not. Um, there, there must have been a reason why only two of them are in the scriptures and reading through the two of them, it's, we see that there's a common thread. Both of them were pagans, pagan kings. Both of them involved murder. I'm not but saying that both of them also involved music and dancing. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you um, could make a case that dancing should be forbidden and secular uh, music. You should only sing the Psalms. There are some religious groups who say you should throw out your hymn books and burn them. It's all of the devil. You should only sing the Psalms. And they use verses like uh, Matthew 14, um, where when Salome danced, uh -huh. The musicians would have been playing secular music. Uh -huh. So you could make a case that from Matthew 14, you uh -huh. know, this is saying that you should only sing the Psalms. You should have no secular music. Dancing is forbidden. But on YouTube, I've seen many videos of Jehovah's Witnesses at Kingdom Hall doing line dancing and um, various entertainment in music, uh -huh. in, involving music uh -huh. and dancing at Kingdom Halls. Uh -huh. Um, what I think yeah. tends to happen is people seize on something in the Bible and it becomes yeah, their hobby understand. horse and they then try and impose it upon everybody else. I used yeah, to be I'll... a Pentecostal. Oh. I used to be in the oneness Pentecostal movement, which oh. is the most extreme form of Pentecostalism. I left oh. years ago. I have nothing to do with it now. Oh. But that's what they do. They go through the Bible, they find something, they turn it into a proof text, and now there you are. Anyone who doesn't do what Pastor so-and-so says obviously is not filled with the Holy Spirit, obviously is on their way to hell, including other Pentecostal churches. Everyone's on their way to hell except for them. And they, they major on minors. They ignore the theme of the Bible, 
And to them, the Bible is all about speaking in tongues, being baptized with the right baptismal formula, and uh, making sure that you wear the right clothes. Women should have long dresses. Men can't wear shorts. Uh, you must never have a short sleeve shirt. Uh, it becomes it becomes ridiculous. It becomes majoring on minors. Mm. Yeah, uh, uh, and I agree with you. And I, I'm glad that you were able to see such in such and be able to compare it with what the scriptures actually want us to do. Uh, you asked me in the morning: Is there is there a particular scripture that tells us do not celebrate your birthdays? Yeah. Obviously, there's no scripture that says do not celebrate birthdays. But birthdays, from the way the Bible portrays it, is a celebration that Jehovah is not happy with. You need it's to prove that. With. Yes, well, it's you not happy to, because... You need to prove that. Okay. okay. It's no good saying uh, that. Mormons, Mormons would tell you that Joseph Smith is a prophet of God. Seventh-day Adventists would tell you, you must, you must go to church on Saturday. It is the Sabbath. Oh. Mormons have sacred underwear that they wear. Uh, with a square and compass on it. There's all sorts of religious groups who have their own mm. little thing that they push, but they don't prove it. They just repeat stuff. Because mm. they repeat mm. it enough, people just accept it. Do you need mm. to prove everything from the Bible? Okay, yeah. When, when, when Salome danced in Matthew 14, are you aware of what the um, phrase, I'll give you half my kingdom, means? He promised that he would um, give her half because he was a ruler. No, he didn't. He didn't do it? No, he didn't promise to cut the kingdom in half and give her 50%. You'd have to be a very good dancer for somebody to say, I'm going to give you half of my wealth. Mm. Right? It's an, yes. it's an idiomatic phrase. Salome was the daughter of his wife. Mm, yeah. She was his um, <clears throat> stepdaughter. Stepdaughter, yeah. And she did such a sexy dance to, obviously to music, that the king said to her, I will give you half my kingdom, which is, which is a euphemism for marriage. He was promising okay. to marry her own, he was promising to marry his own right, stepdaughter, his own daughter, his own stepdaughter. Because his thoughts were not, his thoughts were rather carnal. So that's what I'll give you half the kingdom means. He's, he's, he's going to divorce her mother and marry her because he, he was, you know, he was getting rather randy thoughts. Yes, that's the context yes. for Matthew 14. See, if you don't understand the context, we can make the Bible mean anything we, we, we want it to mean. Now, based on that, the fact that uh. it happens to be a birthday celebration in Matthew 14 is really irrelevant. If, if, if Matthew 14 is trying to teach us anything, and I don't believe oh. it is, in the, our own conduct, it's saying uh, that, that um, surely dancing is forbidden and secular music is forgiven, forbidden, which I don't believe is the case. Um, certainly, um, in the case of Pharaoh's birthday party, I would imagine there would be some pagan aspect to that. But Genesis 40 is 4,000 years ago. Uh, when yes. a little child of seven or eight has a birthday party today, there's no connection between a little child's birthday cake with candles in the year 2022, or tomorrow it's 2023, and, and what a pagan king did at his birthday 4,000 years ago. This isn't a pattern for, for Christians to follow, surely. If it is, if it is a pattern to follow, then... You shouldn't keep pets. Yeah, yeah, I know you said that in the morning. Yeah, yeah. where and, in the and, Bible? And, and we're not, and, and we're not, we're not looking at extreme situations like that. We're not um, have, uh, getting the mind of God and the mind of Christ on some of these matters. It, 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 it needs us to read the scriptures and understand the context in the scriptures. Everything in the scriptures was written there for a reason, and I'm not saying that it's. We're, we're looking at the pattern of everything. There were, there were maybe only a few marriages, marriage ceremonies in the Bible. We won't, because of that, say that, oh, uh, the Bible is against or in support of marriage ceremonies. So that, that's not what we're saying. Uh, the, 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 the whole point of the uh, uh, birthdays being only two that were celebrated in the Bible 
and in which we we are aware in going. Okay, okay, fine. Have a nice hour. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and the fact that uh, there were only two, and th those two are the only that are portrayed in the scriptures, and Christians, we, we, we have books in the Bible that portrays the life of Christians and what they did as Christians, the celebrations they observed. Uh, Jesus Christ, who is the main, who, who we are the main footstep followers of Jesus Christ, he is the main leader of the Christian religion. So all, it, it's, it's a combination of all those factors that enable us as Jehovah's Witnesses to see that birthdays is not something that God is pleased with. And I'm Prove glad that. that even... Prove it. Yeah, don't don't no, tell no, it to me. I've spoken no, to proof, many proof, Mormons. I've, I've spoken to many people, Mormons, Seventh-day Adventists, The Way International, yeah. Worldwide Church of God, all sorts of wonders Pentecostals. They, they repeat stuff to you. They, they repeat their hobby horse, but they don't prove yeah. it from the Bible. Well, what that, is that, wrong that is with a child of eight or nine keeping a birthday today? Just tell me well, what's wrong with yeah. it. That, that's it. The origin is not Christian. Right, okay. The, oh, okay, all right. So that's your point. The origin for well, some that's birthdays... One them. That's, that's one of them. No, no, no let's deal with one thing at a time. Let's deal with okay, one yeah. thing at a time. Mm. Right, yeah. the days of the week. Monday is named after the, mon the moon god. Mm -hmm. Today is Saturday. Mm -hmm. That's named after Saturn. Mm -hmm. Satan is linked to Saturn. Yes. Every yes. time you say Sunday, you're acknowledging the sun god. Mm -hmm. July is named after Julius Caesar. Augustus. Yeah, yeah. August yes. is named after the Emperor Augustus. Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. days of the week and some of the mm -hmm. months are pagan. Yeah. So therefore you are committing paganism when you use the days of the week. Is that the case? Or, has, or have they lost their meaning over time? No. No. Do you want me to answer that? Yeah. The, the, well, the answer there is no. There is difference between um, naming the days of a week or the, the uh, months of a year and actually having a celebration. If, on the other hand, because there's some, there's some religions that actually pick days of the week or pick months of the years and have celebrations on them. If you go, I'm sure you went through that uh, um, back chapter 44 of the book. It's not only birthdays that it refers to. It refers to other celebrations. Let's stick to birth. Let's yeah, stick no, to well, birthdays. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not going to deviate into others. I'm also keeping on birthdays. So, but as long as we're not celebrating on those days, if I set aside a, a time of the year due to that name of that month, and I carry out a celebration every year, well, I will start to question whether it's displeases God or not because of the origin of this. But the fact that the names of those of the days of the week or the names of the months of the year come from there and that's what everybody calls them, that is not a celebration. Now what what Jehovah's Witnesses are against and what we understand from the scriptures as far as birthdays is concerned is that it is not a Christian celebration. The only a celebra the only the two celebrations of birthdays yes, in but, the Bible but, but plumbing isn't Christian. Yeah, but the, the, hold, hold, on, religion, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're mixing up things here. It's not, hold on. It's not a celebration. Hold on. They didn't, yeah, have, yeah. They, they didn't have plumbing in the Old Testament. I believe they did mm. in some of the more expensive Probably Roman not, yeah. Roman houses. But not in the Old Testament. Maybe, maybe you know, I, I, I'm, yeah. So if plumbing isn't Christian, does that mean that Christians should defecate in the field. It says in the Old Testament, if you want to go to the toilet and do a number two, you dig a hole in the field and you do oh, your business yes. in the hole and then cover it over. Yes. You know, should we do away with plumbing because plumbing isn't Christian? I feel that your answer to the days of the week are not is not really adequate. The days of the week have a pagan root which is totally uh, lost in our society today. When somebody uh, says Monday or Sunday or July. It's totally lost its pagan meaning, but it has a pagan root. Uh, Wedding rings have a pagan root. They're circular uh, because they signify an eternal covenant between the two marriage partners with a pagan god. Uh, the wedding veil and wedding flowers were used to ward off evil spirit. Originally, instead of flowers, they used to use garlic and other herbs to ward off the evil spirits. But eventually, uh, over time, 
um, the flowers were used as bouquets in, instead of these uh, vegetables like garlic. Um, the bridesmaids used to be dressed in the same um, clothes as the bride. And the reason was that they felt that evil spirits um, was, were going to attack the bride. So if they had bridesmaids dressed the same, the evil spirit wouldn't know which to attack. All right. Yes, yes. The tradition of having oh. the bride dressing in white started with Queen Victoria. Before then, white bridal gowns weren't, weren't generally used. Um, the fact that wedding rings and the wedding ceremony has a lot of paganism in it, which which is still used today. We still use wedding rings today. We still give bouquets. We still have bridesmaids today. That's not that's not Christian. None of that is Christian. But it's lost its meaning. It has no pagan meaning today. And you cannot spend your Christian walk majoring on minors. In fact, when you phoned, I was um, listening to a talk about the United Pentecostal Church International, which is a oneness movement, a very, very extreme Pentecostalism, and the legalism that they have, where they oh. major upon minors. And pastors will stand up and talk about how people are dressed. And, uh, you know, women are very, women must not have any jewellery, it's a sin, it's wicked. And the pastor's really just giving his own opinions, but then the pastor can have gold cufflings and a gold Rolex watch and have a Ferrari parked outside, and that's okay. <laughs> because as far as he's concerned, the Bible is to be used to keep those women in their place. They mustn't have jewellery to adorn their self, but there's a different standard for him. And that's, so that's the person change, yeah. who was a woman was going through various examples in the United Pentecostal Church and other extreme oneness churches of how double standards exist. The Bible says in Colossians 2.16 that we are not to, to let people judge us that's in it. festivals. Okay. Therefore, that's let that's no that's one that's judge that's you that's in food or in drink or regarding that's a that's festival or a new moon or Sabbath. So we're not to be judged in festivals. Now, obviously... If a festival is a, a festival that worships the devil, I wouldn't want anything to do with that. Uh. Um, but, you know, even something like Christmas. Father Christmas used to be dressed in green. His elves were dressed in green. Uh. The tradition of Father Christmas dressing in red and white is from the 1930s, from a series of very expensive advertising campaigns by Coca-Cola, and it was the Coca-Cola company that changed the image of Father Christmas from uh, a big fat green. fellow dressed okay. in green to a big fat fellow with a white beard dressed in red and white, right. because red and white are the colours of the Coca-Cola company. Yeah, See, I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah so, <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay. I mean, I mean, let me give you one or two more examples. Eye makeup is pagan. Men shaving is pagan. The Egyptians shave. They used to leave usually a little sort of stubble on the base of their chin. The Greeks were clean shaven and the Romans were clean shaven. The, the Jews are told in the Old Testament not to trim the edges of their beard. Now, if, if most Jehovah's Witnesses are clean shaven. I know there are some Jehovah's Witnesses with moustaches and smaller beards. Um, but they're usually denied what's called privileges. I was studying this earlier today. Um, there's a kind of double standard. Um, Jehovah's Witness leaders will say, we don't have any prohibition on moustaches or, or beards. Jehovah's Witness men can wear those. And that's true to a certain extent. But if you're a white man and you have a beard or possibly a moustache, you can lose your privileges. You can't talk at the Kingdom Hall. You can't answer questions. You might not be allowed to go out on the cards. Not, if that's, if you're that's a person of ethnic origin and you have a beard and that's part of your culture, then maybe maybe a blind eye would be turned to that. But shaving is a pagan practice. Dogs are mentioned 40 times in the Bible in the negative, always in the negative. No Christian in the Bible that I can think of kept pets. Can you think of a verse where Christians kept pets? So does that mean that the Bible doesn't, it mentions dogs in a negative sense? Does that mean that it's a sin for a Christian to keep a dog? No, 
no, not necessarily, no, no. Mm. Then don't you think this is a bit like birthdays? We're not to be judged in festivals because whatever a festival was at the time of Pharaoh, and I grant you it might have had some pagan aspect to it, a little child of eight having a birthday party today with a cake is not having the same sort of birthday party that a Pharaoh of Egypt would have been having 4,000 years ago. They're totally different events. Any pagan route that might be in the birthday party is totally lost today. Totally lost. It, a little child of eight is not worshipping the devil if he has a birthday yeah. cake. And, you know, this is the sort of... Okay. This is okay. the sort of legalism that I, as a oneness Pentecostal, back in the 1980s, the sort of thing which I saw all the time. You know, the, the leaders and the pastors would just go around pointing the finger at sinners who had women especially had dresses that weren't long enough. Women's arms should be covered all the way down to the wrist completely, even in summer. Um, you know, I mean, some of the women were sort of dressed like something that's just come out of the mummy's tomb. They were so wrapped in clothes. The same thing happens in Islam. It's just a form of legalism and it's done to control people. If, if the Bible, the Bible says we're not to go beyond what's written. 1 That's Corinthians 4, yeah, 6. That, yeah. Don't go beyond what's, what's written. Mm. Um, and, and perhaps the worst thing of all are baby showers. And um, I have heard that Jehovah's Witness women, many of them, it's not a rare thing, it's a common practice for Jehovah's Witness women to have baby showers before their births, where other Jehovah's Witness women mm. give them presents and wish them good luck or wish them all the best. For the, for the for the baby for the baby yeah and they also jehovah's witness women send congratulation cards when the baby is born well how completely inconsistent as to you know i mean this this seems crazy to me to give someone a, a card celebrating the birth of their birthday just as the angels celebrated when jesus was born mm. um and uh yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, I mean, um, Luke 2. Yeah, 11, I, I for, well, for, I, I'm, I'm aware of what you're referring to. Yeah, the angels did, did celebrate, yeah. Yeah. And it was said... Um, Luke 2, 11 to 14. Uh, for there is born to you this day in the city of David a saviour who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger... Verse 13, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God Glory. in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. Well, that's on the day of his birth. Why would they do that if birthdays are such a wicked thing that we... You know, you know, it, it doesn't make any, any logical sense. There, there is another practice in Mexico which Jehovah's uh. Witnesses allow because they say the pagan root has, has lost its meaning. And I totally agree with Jehovah's Witnesses in this. I forget the Watchtower article. Uh. It's, talking about pian, it's talking about pianatas. Have you ever heard of pianatas? Pianatas, uh, yes. I'm trying to remember what it's related to. It's, it's basically... Uh. Uh, sort of um, little toy donkey about two feet long made of cloth and you tie a rope around it hang it from a tree and you hit it with a stick I know it seems quite a crazy thing to do but apparently it started in China Marco Polo brought it to Venice it then went to Spain and when the conquistadors went to the Americas they took the tradition of the piñata with them Okay. So you have a celebration where every now and again all the kids they get a stick and they basically take it in turns to beat a beat a donkey. I don't know if their eyes are covered or whether they can see or not, but it's basically hitting a donkey with a stick, not a real donkey, hopefully, just a sort of um toy toy donkey. Oh, yeah. Um now it does have pagan roots and the watchtower says it has pagan roots. But quite uh -huh. correctly the watchtower says, Well it's totally lost its pagan meaning. And I would okay. agree with that, just as the days oh. of the week have lost their pagan roots and the, the meaning of wedding rings, which are pagan, have lost their oh. pagan root. But the Watchtower seems to have a, a double standard in saying when it comes to birthdays, um, this still has a pagan root. And I tell you why they do it. They do it for the same reason that the Oneness Pentecostals do what they do and the Mormons do oh. what they do. If you've got a religious group 
and you want people to dedicate their lives to your group because I think you you would be aware that most religious people don't give a hoot they don't take it seriously yeah okay yeah yeah so if you're going to start a religion and say we're the only religion on earth everyone else is of the devil we're the only ones who are right then there has to be something about your religion that's different you can't teach exactly the same thing as the Baptist church down the road or the Methodist church down the road. There has to be something different. And so that's why the Seventh-day Adventist will go to their grave maintaining you must go to your church meeting on Saturday, not Sunday. Because it's a load of absolute silly nonsense. They don't even know what the Sabbath is. I spoke to a Seventh-day Adventist pastor for three months three weary months where he never answered any question he just gave me book after book after book and dvds of movies and um hundreds and hundreds of photocopies um, oneness oneness pentecostals exactly the same they believe that everyone's going to go to hell if you're not baptized with the title lord jesus christ except other oneness groups a few of them would say it's jesus christ not lord jesus christ and then other oneness groups would say it's um Actually, it's actually Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ, but you have to say it in, in Arabic. Sorry, sorry, Aramaic, not Arabic. <laughs> okay. Or you have to say it in Hebrew, it's Yeshua. And then there's another one, this group, a Chinese-based one, the biggest one in the world, who say, well, uh, you have to say, I I'm baptised you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, but the candidate has to have their chin resting on their chest. And, and so they will go, they, they will not compromise on the baptismal formula. Because if they okay. do, they're just the same as every other group. And that's really what a lot of this religious stuff is about. If you're going to have a high control religious group, there has to be a couple of things that you do that are completely different. With Jehovah's Witnesses, it's not keeping birthdays. There are other groups that don't keep Christmas until very recently. Well, actually, I've never had a Christmas tree. Um, and I don't keep Christmas, I live alone, I don't have a family, but up until basically this year, I've not kept Christmas on religious grounds. Now I'm ambivalent, really. I okay. just, you know, okay. I don't think it really matters at all. Christmas has got more to do with the Coca-Cola company than to do with worshipping Satan. <laughs> um, and, and these, okay. yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, and, uh, and um, I really enjoy, and, uh, and I really, I must say that uh, I respect the, the amount of research you've really done, really showing that uh, you, you really want to know more. I mean, one thing that you mentioned, which is even very, uh, enlightening, is the fact that uh, um, the, uh, you, you mentioned the year of the Watchtower, where it, where where it was mentioned we don't celebrate birthdays. What I'm not sure is is it on, is it just then that you almost witnesses stop celebrating birthdays? Yeah, um, um, that was the watchtower for the 1st of October 1951, page 607 in the bound <laughs> yearly volumes. So okay. you, you can look it up on jw.org. Oh, jw.org, um, okay. Before that please, date... Give me, give, me, give me the date again, please. Yeah, 1st of October 1951. 1st of, oh, 1st of October 1951, okay. Page 607. Before that date, they celebrated birthdays. They stopped celebrating Christmas, I think, in 1927. Yeah. Um, okay. And Jehovah's Witnesses, I mean, we'll put our hands up. We're not saying that we we get it right all the time. Mm. As as with the research you've done, you've seen that over over the years, there's some things, there's some new uh, truths. Let me just call it that. That has been uh, more that has become obvious to us as the time moves on. So there's a lot of practices, a lot of um, doctrines, for want of a better word, that we have um, maybe dropped or imbibed or maybe some other understanding of the scriptures that we've taken on board as the light continues to get brighter and brighter. So we're not saying that from day one we've had it right because we've had to change over the years. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the issue that we're discussing about birthdays, uh, in, in the grand scheme of things, birth. Birthdays is it would be one of Jehovah's Witnesses' teachings that is all that important. It's uh, well, I'm not I'm not saying that some of us uh, that we don't agree, we don't all agree that it's wrong. We do know that it's wrong. We're going by what we said from the scriptures, but 
from your own argument, I mean, we probably can apply such arguments to, to, to other things, yeah. But, but birthdays, especially the way the scriptures teach it, it's, it sort of looks like it's treated on a negative note. And it, it, God is trying to tell us something in that well, regard. In Matthew I mean, 14, in, in Matthew 14, if you get anything from Matthew 14, it's that dancing is wrong okay, and okay. secular music <laughs> is wrong. And I don't think that's the case. I think this is just a historical record. I don't believe in Genesis 40 or Matthew 14, God is giving us some pattern that we have to follow okay. in our life. But if you're oh, going okay. to read that into those passages, then you shouldn't dance and you shouldn't listen to secular music. You should burn it. Um, oh, you said uh, we have about, new truths. Yeah, yeah, you said we have new truths. Did I hear you say that? Yeah, um... Revelations from the scripture, new understanding. Let me use that word, not true understanding. Well, actually, Jehovah's Witnesses do call it new truths or new light. New light, yeah. But you, yes. the, but the, you said your exact words were new truths. About mm. five minutes ago, you said new truths. Mm, yeah, well, yeah. Think about that. If you have a new truth, it means that your old truth was never truth at all. It was a lie. In the first place. Yeah, I mean, yes. for instance, let me give you an example. I've told you that you used to celebrate Christmas. Birthdays were banned in 1951. Do you know when the ban on blood transfusions came in? Um, maybe earlier, a lot earlier than that. Um, mm. don't, I, 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 I'll need to check it myself. I don't know. I, I don't 19, have it on my fingertips. 1945. Okay. Um, originally... <clears throat> at the time of Pastor Russell, they taught that Jesus Christ became the Almighty God at his resurrection. Now, I vehemently, vehemently, strongly disagree with that. Yes. Uh, I am a passionate Trinitarian, and I believe Christ eternally is uh, Almighty God. I'm not a modalist. I don't believe Jesus is the Father. The Father and the Son are eternally distinct persons. But um, Russell taught, watched our 1893, page 115, uh. that Jesus Christ became Almighty God at his resurrection. That's repeated in Brian Bible Teacher's Manual, page 454, published in 1909. Uh, it's very clear there. Um, he quotes Revelation 1.8, which is talking about the Almighty God, and he applies that to Christ, but he says Christ uh. became Almighty God at his resurrection. Russell died in 1916. The finished mystery was published the next year in 1917. Uh, I've got uh, all of the editions of that book and page 15 and page 240. Yeah, page 15 and page 240 say that um, Jesus Christ is almighty God, meaning he became almighty God at his resurrection. Now, that's not an old truth. That's either true or, or it's a lie. And because you don't uh, believe that today, it must be a lie. And because it's about Jesus, I do find that rather blasphemous, that Jesus Christ uh. became the Almighty God at his resurrection. And there's, there's tons uh. of stuff like this in the Watchtower. Are you aware uh. they used to teach the second presence of Christ was 1874, uh -huh. not 1914? Uh -huh. you aware of that? Uh -huh. Yes, yes. And some other dates apart from that, yes. Yeah, and they, they changed that in 1930. But confusingly, they promoted both dates for a couple of years. Um, the book Prophecy, published in 1929 on page 65, says the second presence of Christ is from 1874. Again, it's not old truth. It's either true or it's a lie. There's yeah. no such concept yeah. as old truth. Yes, yes. When, either, when, it's when, either when true used, or it's false. When Jehovah's Witnesses use the word new truth, let, let me use that word new truth, inverted comma, open and close, doesn't mean, doesn't mean that it was true and it now is no longer true it has not been true all along but it's our understanding as jehovah's witnesses that has now been improved to understand that it has never been true that means we believed it as a lie beforehand due to our limited understanding and uh, jehovah's witnesses will put their hand up and say yes if you, if you I'm, I'm sure with the research you've done you mm -hmm. can look through the years and look through different doctrines of yeah. ours that we've had to change over the years to get to where we are now. But, even as far back yes. as even a couple of weeks, 
Yes. There were some watchdog studies that we cons- that were considered a, 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 a sort of adjusted understanding of some Bible explanations. Mm-hmm. So we're not saying we're there and we're not going to change because we have everything right. No, it's gradual that uh, the, 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 the revelation of uh, the accurate truth is gradual as far as Jehovah's Witnesses is concerned. But, but how could Jesus have chosen the Watchtower Society in 1919? when at the time they were teaching so much, not truth, not old truth, they were teaching lies about Jesus and about the Bible. Okay. Um, but the fact remains that he did in 1919. He, had a, he, had a, he did choose the, um, uh, the faithful and discreetly back then, uh, give, giving them the, giving them the, uh, the responsibility. He's either he did so. Or hold on. Hold, hold, hold on. Hold on. Pastor Russell alone was the faithful and discreet slave in 1919. That's in the finished mystery, page seven. No, page five. Let me let me just get it up. Let me see if I can see, because I I'm I've got a mountain of books, and it will take yeah, me quite some like time it. to get it. But what I do is I scan my stuff, so hopefully I can find it fairly quickly. Um. It says that Russell alone was the faithful and discreet slave. Okay. And it also states on page 144 that Pastor Russell, after his death, was guiding the Watchtower Society from beyond the grave. I found page five. Uh... The utter destruction, their utter destruction in a time of trouble such as the world has never known and will never know, and that the earthly creature made prominent therein above all others is the messenger of the Laodicean church, that wise and faithful servant of the Lord, Charles Taze Russell. That's page five of the first edition, the 1917 edition of the Finnish Mystery. I believe that's taken out of the 1923 edition, but I could be wrong, I'm working from memory. And there were lots of watchtowers at the time, even going into the 1920s, that talked about Pastor Russell being the faithful and discreet slave. But the amazing thing is, if you look at Studies in the Scripture, Volume 7, called The Finished Mystery, on page 144, it talks about Russell guiding the watchtower society from beyond the grave. It says he's passed beyond the veil, meaning he's dead, because he died in 1916 and this book was published in 1917. All right. So Russell was dead, but he's still the faithful and discreet slave from beyond the grave. He's still guiding the society as the faithful and discreet slave after his death. Uh, The Finnish Mystery, page 144. It's a commentary on, I think it's, yeah, Revelation 8.3. And another angel, Dash, not the voice of the Lord mentioned in the preceding chapter, but the corporate body, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society, which Pastor Russell formed to finish the work, this his work. This verse shows that though Pastor Russell had beyond, passed beyond the veil, that means death, he is still managing every feature of the harvest work. Now that's pure necromancy. The idea that a dead person is guiding the Watchtower Society. And the Watchtower of the 15th of July... 2013 there's a box at the top of the page uh-huh. that talks about um the faithful and discreet slave and okay. i i feel they they tell a lie i feel they're dishonest because in the middle of page 22 well i'll i'll, I'll, uh, read, I'll read the left hand side first the faithful and 2013 watchtower 15th of july 2013 watchtower Page 22. Yeah. Okay. Um, It says in the middle column, appointed over his domestics, in 1919, Jesus selected capable anointed brothers to be his faithful and discreet slave. That is a lie. That's a flat out deliberate misquotation because at the time, the Watchtower Society in numerous Watchtower articles taught that Pastor Russell alone was the faithful and discreet slave. It's only been for the last 10, 12 years or so. I forget the exact date. Perhaps it was from this watchtower, actually. I'm not too sure. 
that the governing body for your eight men in New York State make up the governing, make up the faithful and discreet slave. Okay, um, uh, uh, I'm just beginning on that watch now. Um, yeah, who really is the faithful and discreet slave? Um, it's 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 the middle column at the top of page twenty two in nineteen nineteen. Jesus selected capable anointed brothers, plural, to be his faithful and discreet slave. But the first thing is, he, at the time, they taught Pastor Russell alone was the faithful and discreet slave, not brothers in the plural. Okay. Uh, Rutherford started saying he was the faithful and discreet slave in 1930. And it would take me a little bit of time to find the exact quote. Uh... Yeah, Watchtower, 1st of September, 1930, page 263, was when Rutherford's, as far as I know, I could be wrong, there might be an earlier Watchtower, but that's when he started taking over and he believed he was the faithful and discreet slave. Um, then the faithful and discreet slave was a corporate body of the anointed um, years later. It, it's changed so many different times. But um, certainly from this Watchtower, 2013 Watchtower, maybe a little bit before then, uh, uh, it, the faithful and discreet slave has been linked to the governing body. And that's on the left-hand side of this box. The box is titled, Did You Get the Point? As I say, it's the 15th of July, 2013 Watchtower, page 22. Uh, and it yeah. says the faithful and discreet slave, slave is a a small group of anointed brothers who are brothers. directly involved in preparing and dispensing spiritual food during Christ's presence. Today, these anointed brothers make up the governing body. Well, that was a uh, recent change because for many, many decades before then, the faithful and discreet slave was all of the anointed, including okay. women, I believe. But then women were excluded and then it was limited to the governing body. I mean, there's been so many changes. And I agree with you. You know, I mean, all of these changes cannot be the truth. Okay. Um, there's only one truth. You you can't yes. have multiple truths. That's no, you that's can't. the that's the relativism that's the relativism that's destroying our modern Western society, where everyone's got their own truth. You mustn't judge uh, anybody else. So all truths are true. Well, Jehovah's Witnesses are saying the same thing about their the wide range of beliefs which they've taught and abandoned. I mean, the resurrection of the men of Sodom, they've changed that position six or seven times. It, it's amazing. They taught the men of Sodom would be resurrected, then they wouldn't be resurrected, then they would be resurrected, and they wouldn't be resurrected. They changed yeah. roughly six or seven I times, think, going I'm, back I'm and forwards well, on I mean, the resurrection well, of the men of Sodom. Um, well, well, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll need to check on that myself. Mm. Um, now, where that that has changed in the, the, that number of times, because Sodom and Gomorrah, God Himself put them to death. He, they were they were destroyed by by the hands of God Himself. Yes, but will the men of Sodom be resurrected? The watchtower has says yes, they will. Then a decade later or so, no, they won't. A decade later, yes, they will. A decade later, no, they won't. They've changed their position changed approximately six or okay, seven times. Okay, that's something I'll have to I'll, I'll, I'll have to check. But it's it's news to me. Yeah. Uh, obviously, I'm 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 younger than you, and uh, you probably have uh, delved into a lot of uh, historic facts of Jehovah's Witnesses more than myself. Yeah, I've done a bit, but probably not as much as you have done. So let, let me just ask: What's your background? Are you studying with Jehovah's? You, you told me that you uh, it, you used to be a Pentecostal, which you. Uh, mm. No longer, but have you, have you at any time studied with Jehovah's Witnesses or you just <coughs> have access to our books and our literature in which you have done um, your research? I have a massive library of Jehovah's Witness books. Okay. Uh, I am trying to get hold of a copy of Sing to Jehovah in the giant print edition. So I'm quite, oh, I'm, if you come that across that, one, yeah. I'm, willing, I'm willing to pay. I'm willing oh. to pay for it and pay postage. I want both editions, though. Okay, the, 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 the large print edition of the Sing to Jehovah, yep, the, and the, the, brown, the brown cover, the one with the brown no, cover? it's Sing to Jehovah. On the back cover, there's a picture of people holding 
uh, so, uh, holding holding the book and and singing. And okay. in the bottom left of the first edition, there is a black man, and he was taken out in the later editions and replaced with a white man. I'm after a giant print edition of both copies. I'm happy to pay. I'll happily, you know, I don't care how cop tatty the copies are, but I'll yeah. I'll pay you for the books and pay you for the postage. Um, yeah, but if you if you come up if you if you come across it, if you come across, across it. Um, I've got a normal uh, size just, edition. It's funny you should say that. It's just uh, reasoning. Sorry. It looks as if I'm losing, you know. I have to open these windows again. I've shut them before. I've opened the windows again, so maybe they maybe be a bit better. Right. Is it, is it, is it sing praises to Jehovah, you said, yeah? Hello? Uh, <coughs> is, that, is that the title, sing praises to Jehovah? Or maybe that's not the one. Uh, all right, let me just go down. Sing to Jehovah. Published oh, in 2008. And on the back people. cover, there are people singing. And in the bottom left, there is a black man and a black woman. In the later edition, the um, black man has been replaced with a white man. <laughs> I, want, I want both editions, but Tell giant you. print. I do have the normal size edition of Sing to Jehovah with the black, with the black man. But I'm looking for giant print editions. And there is a reason why I, I actually do actually need it. It's not something I want. It's something I actually need. You need, oh, okay. I'll, 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 I'll yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm happy to pay. You know, I'm, uh, I don't know if yeah. ten, ten pounds would be adequate. Yeah, no, but yeah, I'm no, no, quite no, happy no, to no, send no, you a no, tenner. No. It, but I, I do need both copies. I've got the normal size ed, ed, edition with the black man, but it's the giant print edition. I don't care how tatty it is. I'm only interested okay. in the back pages. Okay then. Hey, I'll have a look. The one I've got with me here is Sing Praises to Jehovah. Well, I think the one you actually need is is later than this. This one was published in because uh, we've uh, updated our songbooks over the years. No, no, uh, no. The one I'm after was published in 2008 and revised yeah, in 2009. Think, I'm very precise. I don't want uh, a songbook. I want this that is 90, songbook. This is 1984. So this, the one you want is after this. Yeah, I think. Uh, it was, it was published it's in 2008. Yellow, yellowish, light yellowish uh, back, yeah, light yellowish with green. It's got, it's, I'm, I'm looking at the back, a scan of the back page. It's got yeah. uh, about a dozen people singing and it's the outline is green. It's got a greenish background. That's it, yeah, I think I, I remember it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, and yeah. the reason, I mean, I'm just assuming that the reason is because uh, the different um, pictures that they had of on the back cover yes um uh, the updates okay uh, I, I won't pay too much attention to that i mean uh, even, even even our watchstars of the same edition the, the, some were, that are released in some lands the main pictures and the main artwork on them they vary from lands to land even though the content is the same but i mean you you, you it's you're what you're quite welcome to have them right. uh, as your own reference yeah um, have you at any time maybe attended our meetings, studied with us one-to-one, uh, -one, or you've just done your personal research? Um, I was invited to uh, Kingdom Hall opposite the Eye Hospital about 15 years ago, maybe maybe okay. 12 years ago, mm -hmm. and also to one in Tor Point in Cornwall, perhaps a little bit more than that, perhaps about 15 okay. years ago. Um, I studied with two Jehovah's Witnesses, the Little Yellow Book, what what can the Bible teach us? Yes, what can we get? Um, we they turned up in ever. Before. They turned up in ever increasing numbers. It started off with two, then mm. it began to be three of them, and by lesson four, it was four of them, and we did lesson four in two parts, and mm. uh, by the second part, I think they called the circuit servant. I think he was called. He okay, was one yeah. of their top people. Think, so there was four yeah. of them, and just me on my own. Uh, and then I didn't see them anymore. They sort of fled from my house. Okay. Um, uh. There was another Jehovah's Witness, Elder, who I remember had a, uh, I think he had a Mercedes or a Jaguar. Okay. He had a very, he's quite a rich man. He had quite a nice car because after mm. we talked, he would sometimes take me to the local shop, which is on his way home because mm. uh, I would buy the discounted food round about seven o'clock, you see. 
And oh, okay. he said if I went through the book with him, which I think was the grey book, the revised, oh. um, what can the Bible teach us? Yes, but there was a, yeah, there was a revised one. What, what, uh, yeah, what can the Bible teach us? Yes, that's the reverse. The yeah. initial one was called What Does the Bible Really Teach? But what I said Bible that, yeah. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he said if I went through the book with him, he would ask, answer all of my questions once we finished the mm. book. We went through the mm. book. I said, right, will you answer my questions? He said, of course I will, when you read the next book. So I said, get out of the house and don't, don't come back. He lied to me. Uh, Very insistent that people sure. are honest with me. And one of the reasons I don't go to church anymore is my heart's just been, I've been let down too often. Okay. Not, by, not by Jehovah's Witnesses. I've got no personal grudge against Jehovah's Witnesses. But um, uh, a lot of religious, a, lo a, a lot of religion is to do with two things. It's people getting status and control, a sense of power over other people, which they like. And the other thing is money. It's just a uh, money-making racket. And whilst I certainly do believe the Bible is the word of God, I'm, I'm passionate for Christ's virgin birth, his sinless life. I believe in his literal, physical, bodily resurrection. I'm a passionate Trinitarian who actually understands the Trinity, which is unusual. Um, I believe in Christ's literal, bodily second coming. I believe the Bible is the word of God from cover to cover. None of that's of any importance to most, most religious people. Um, oh. Most religion is based on going to a building and just being part of a group. And, oh. um, for the leaders, oh, okay. it's a sense of power over people and getting the money. And I'm afraid as I've got older, I've become more cynical that most religion is just a complete con. Oh. Because um, well, very few yeah, people yeah, actually right. take yeah. it seriously. You, you see, lots of people who say they believe in Jesus or they believe in Jehovah or they believe in God or they believe in the Lord, they actually don't. But anyway, can we finish there?